Welcome to the hobby shop. Come on in. Got a couple projects we're working on here. One of them is the uh, new geothermal uh, circulation system. This is the pump and the uh, bladder can. That's the air bleeder. Right now we're working on laying out the board that's going to mount the pump and the valves and all of the uh, equipment that operates it. And uh, over here we got some fittings and tube to uh, put all this together with. We've been working with these little mounts to uh, mount the stuff down. But uh, one of the situations is that the uh, big old bladder can here Big old bladder can makes it need to stand away from the wall pretty far. The mount board. So we're coming up with ideas like that. We'll see. In the process of laying out the board, it became obvious that doing sub assemblies would be a much easier way to go. So I assembled the air bleed and bladder can together and then the pump and valves and gauges were kind of obvious to make those into a sub-assembly. And from there things started to progress more smoothly. Started to look like what I was expecting to create. Ah, yes, there's all the stuff we need to put in a couple of wells. Look at those little blue little turnaround tubes right there. You're going to see more of those in a minute. Okay, if you're going to put down the geo well, you got to have holes in the ground, and you got to have tubes to put in holes. First thing you do is lay out your tubes, measure them, cut them to length. If you know how, long, how deep you're going to drill your holes, uh, my first well, I didn't know. <laughs> Very interesting. So, uh, but they're all going to be about uh, 17, 15 to 17 feet. And so, uh, I know exactly how long I'm going to make them. We're going to cut four hoses uh, at about 17 feet and put them uh, together in pairs with a uh, turnaround uh, three quarter. This is all three quarter inch tubing, and uh, it's uh, going to have a turnaround uh, at the bottom double clamps on every tube and uh, we'll get these ready and uh, they'll be uh, set aside for the uh, activity of inserting as soon as the drill uh, string is taken up out of the hole uh, so that there's no dirt coming back down in there plugging our hole up. Now this is the turnaround tube at the bottom of, of these uh, uh, two uh, wells we're digging right now. Put these uh, um, things on there. They really fit tight. And uh, then double clamp them. Cut them both off at the same length. This is the second one going in. And uh, so that when you're, uh, when you're ready to uh, uh, pull that drill out, these are ready to go in. As you uh, get ready to finish these, you have to install the clamps. We're using two different types of stainless steel clamps, one on each of the uh, each and every tube clamp position. One is a stainless steel screw clamp like you might find on your heater hoses or radiator or whatever. And the other is a pinch clamp, also uh, pure stainless steel for underground use. The screw clamp goes over the top of the high ridges on these uh, inside pipes that go into the polypropylene tubing. And uh, then the crush clamp there, the squeeze clamp, goes above it and seals it off around the neck. So nothing can even get underneath that to get at the ribs. So uh, it makes for a very good seal. And then they're ready to go in the ground.
All right, guy. Good enough. I'll line him up. Then we'll talk a little bit about the drill itself. You'll see how that works. Let's beam this boy up here. There you go. This is the bit. This is uh, an adapter. I think I glued on. And then this is just a, well, it's a nipple. Inch and a half. It's all inch and a half pipe, I believe. And, uh, yeah, we just hacksawed some slits in that. Bent it out this way and that way. We got it going and out. We got them going in. We got them going twisty. So whatever gets in the way, that sucker's going to be wanting to bite on it. So we got a got the uh, water inlet, T board, T board, and we got and the, we got the this is just basically a hose adapter that's adapted up to the size of inch and a half for the uh, PVC, and. Uh, that's how the water comes in, goes down the drill string, and uh, washes out the cuttings. Well, I don't know if this is going to show too well. Hopefully you'll be able to see the top of the drill string. This is the water supply. Good pressure. Screws right on to the uh, top cap here for the drill string. also kind of acts like a blow off because it only pushes on and uh, a little unwieldy getting her going so hang on tight Now it's about 18 feet long and uh, we got the holes laid out where we're going to put these uh, last two wells and uh, up it goes and you start turning it back and forth back and forth that water's flowing down that uh, PVC pipe right now and it continues to flow down and come out at the cutting bit down at the bottom and it washes back up the hole and uh, brings up sand and clay and never saw rocks come up not that fast of a flow I guess but uh, that's how we uh, drilled all ten of those holes just turn it back and forth and let it go down goes down pretty quick on the first uh, 18 inches is yellow sand under there and boy does it ever wash out a big old sinkhole and then it gets into the hard clay and the hard clay is tough going and uh but you know a couple hours later you get down and uh um now what, what you do when you bounce it like that what you're doing is like forcing that water up really quickly and it brings up more of the cuttings and the dirt that's and fluid in the wash in the water so this is uh this hole's done now we're taking the the drill out and uh we'll set that aside and those um, black tubes that have been prepared um, are now ready. One of the things that we've done with those tubes is to straighten out as much as possible the first six feet by bending it and trying real, real uh, as good as you can to straighten it. Because if it's curly, it's going to dig into the side of the well as it goes down, knock dirt down, and dirt will go down before you. Oh yeah, you got to have your water at hand when you uh, put a tube down. Those empty tubes, there's no water in it right now, and uh, it floats. And you shove it down that hole, and it'll pop right back up out of there like a cork. So you get it down into the hole, and then uh, grab your hose and put water in it. And that makes it heavy as the water around the outside of the, the plastic, and uh, it'll tend to stay down in the hole. So... <laughs> You see, I just step on the side of it to hold it from jumping up out of there and put some water in it. Takes a minute to fill it up. And then uh, then it won't come out of the hole. These, um, 
These are at least 15 foot uh, in the ground, two tubes, that's 30 foot a tube in the ground uh, for each hole times 10 holes. It's about 300 feet of three quarter inch uh, tubing that's in the ground in that, uh, what would you call it, circuit. And uh, yeah, pull, it, pull the dirt back in the hole and uh, wash it in. Take your time, fill that hole back up best you can. And it'll come down. Um, we washed it down and, and filled it again and washed it down and filled it again and uh, to get that dirt down around the pipes. If there's air, it's not going to transmit the heat very well. And the idea is that these tubes are going to pick up the 55 degree heat that's in the ground. And then when it's zero outside, that's a lot of heat. So once all the welds are in, the only thing you have to do then is uh, hook the welds together to create the circuit. The uh, excess pipe is more than enough to reach between the welds. You install the unions, double clamp them, and uh, you're ready to go. It's always great to have a buddy come over and do that some of that digging for you too. It's my least favorite part of the whole job. But it's not all that bad. We dug them to about two feet down uh, just to keep them out of the uh, frosty area. Of course the greenhouse can be on top of it anyway. Well here's the here's the completed field that's coming out of the garage building. Let me start off from back so you can get a perspective. There's the garage. There's the field. Ten holes. Ten wells. And back into the, that's the whole circuit. And this is where they come up. This is the control board. There's an air bleed, there's a, 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 a baffle in here like this, so all the air will come up, get trapped up there. This is a bladder tank, maintains pressure on the system. Goes through, I have a little clear tube on there just for fun. And then in and out the pump, circulator pump. Over to the radiator. Back out to the field. It's going to be simpler. Radiator is going to have a uh, fan mounted on it. For openers, we're going to use this little box fan. It'll have the ability to be orientated like so. There'll be a hole in the wall there going out to the greenhouse. It'll be out there. Or if we want to just heat the garage, we're going to give it a 90 degree swing like that. Close the uh, chute out to the greenhouse. I imagine most of the time it's going to be like this. So that's it. Simple homemade geothermal system. About a thousand bucks, maybe. Maybe 800, I'm not sure. I didn't count the receipts yet. Got a little wiring to do. Going to hook up the switch. Going to hook up the fan. Got a Mount a box in here, put some red LEDs on it so I know that everything's powered up. Yeah, pretty simple. The 55 degree air conditioner during the summer. And get 55 degree heat when it's zero outside during the winter. How oh, cool.
Well, here we are. It's a uh, first test run. Got system pressurized. This is the uh, low side or the suction side. We're operational, 25 PSI. On the whole side. 35 on the pressure side. Now one thing I have to tell you is that everything I've done here has been by logic, not by manual or engineering. It seems like a logical system to me, and by golly, it works fine. Now, another advantage, I think, to this system is that at any time, I could uh, come here and put in another, take, you know, remove the radiator from the circuit and put it into a, a water to water heat exchanger or run it through a heat pump, or I could use this circuit for anything that I wanted. Right now, it's just a, a plain radiator with a, a fan on it. And that's the way I plan on using it this year. But uh, anyway, that's how this thing got charged. That's how it works for me. That's how I designed it to work. And it seems like it's working quite nicely. We got some film on the uh, field out there. And this is where the pipes come in from that field. And you'll see all of that. Let me know what you think. I don't know what to think about all of this. It seems to work just fine. That's what I wanted it to do is give me 55 degree radiated heat. And, uh, and I've got that. So um, what did I do wrong? What could I have done differently or better? Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be listening. Let me know what you think. Go, on, Maddie. Here you go. There she is, all finished. On a rotator. So I want it to heat the garage or the greenhouse. Flexible tubes. That's standing pressure, 25 pounds. Got it wired up. A little red LED don't work, but I'll switch it on. First, I'll put it on low. We switch it on. It goes up to 30. Switch it to medium. All right. I don't know if you can hear it. Running. No bubbles in the side glass. Works perfect. Both sides 22. High size, what, 32? Oh, yeah. Colder than shit. <laughs> Works as designed. How cool is that? Time for Guinness. <laughs>